So, a couple of days ago, my wonderful, beautiful partner, love of my life, took me to one side and basically we had a bit of a discussion and that discussion centred around the fact that my valuable and ever-growing collection of radio equipment and accessories was perhaps getting a little bit much and that the space on my desk was diminishing rapidly uh, to the point where things were perhaps falling on the floor and uh, she asked me to rectify the situation. What she actually said was, so out there's that much f***ing radio stuff on your f desk that it's falling onto the floor and if i don't do something about it she's going to throw it all in the f***ing bin so uh being the loving partner that i am i've decided to rectify that situation problem solved i bought a bigger desk shaktar anybody welcome back to the channel and yes in all seriousness this did need sorting out it was becoming ridiculous i had a tiny little corner desk wedged here with three monitors on it and a monitor on my side table and everything anyway let's do a quick shack tour i'll take you through everything that we've got up and running and i will say this a lot during this video have a look in the description because i'll say things that are going to be relevant to links in the video description uh for other videos that apply to that that i've done in the past it'll all make sense as we go along okay starting over here we've got the brains of the operation we need a brains because i haven't got one this is the yesu ftdx10 Absolutely fantastic radio, uh, does everything that I need it to do, data modes, uh, all the usual FM, uh, sideband, AM. There are hundreds of videos about this particular uh, transceiver on the internet, so I'm not going to try and direct you to anyone in particular. If you want to know more about the radio, just type it in and you know follow the ones that come up at the top of the list. Um, yeah, fantastic. That is going into an end-fed half-wave antenna. Uh, which is a multibander, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And yes, there are links to videos in the description for my antenna, uh, a little bit of theory, and then the actual setup of the antenna. So Enford Halfwave Part 1 and Part 2 are in the description. This is a set of BH high, BH high? BHI headphones, uh, noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones, but with a jack on it so that you can hardwire it, which is what I've done into the radio. Uh, really good noise cancelling headphones, superb sound quality if you just want to unplug them and listen to you know music from your phone on Bluetooth as well. Uh, they were on offer, uh, there was a discount code in the RSGB magazine Radcom, uh, so that's why I got those. So yep, there's that. Uh, what next? Uh, in the middle here, you can't really see it, but I'll, I'll do some B-roll close-up stuff. There is a uh, powered USB dock. Um, I don't have anything directly connected to the radio through that. It's just for the ancillary stuff, the mouse, the keyboard, all that sort of stuff. If I want to charge my headphones up or anything like that, that's what that's there for. We have a power supply unit. It's a switch mode power supply unit. It's the Samlex Power SEC1235P-M. And uh, yeah, switch mode, and it's, it's perfect. For me, it works brilliantly. It's tiny, 13.8 fixed voltage, and... Uh, it's absolutely noiseless. I don't have any issues with it at all. That does have a video, link in the description, uh, new power supply unit video. Uh, that'll be linkable down there for you. Right, what else have we got? Right, Yesu M90 microphone. Now this is the boom version rather than the desk mic version. So it was just the microphone of the boom and it comes with this handy little push to talk thumb switch thing. Um, yeah, really good mic. Um, what I will say is the receiver on the FTDX10, pretty much like the 710 and the FTDX101, is, is beautiful, it's sublime. It, you can pick out the, the quietest of signals in the noisiest of environments. Um, everything sounds great coming in. Out of the box, they don't sound so good transmitting. Uh, so what I've done is I did a full step-by-step -step guide. I called it the ultimate audio setup tutorial. There's a link to that in the description to get the most out of your transmit audio from this radio. And there's a few things in there which surprised a lot of people, like the AMC, how that works, uh, the automatic mic gain control, and uh, what you do with processing and things like that. So if you want to get, if you've got a, an FTDX10, an FT710, or an FTDX101, watch that video. Uh, that will take you from start to finish how to get really good sounding audio. Right, you'll notice there's another little box here. 
Um, I have, again, B-roll, I'll show you actually underneath the desk afterwards, a foot switch push to talk. Um, the little hand thing's great. But if you're streaming or contesting and things like that, I need both hands free. So um, I'm quite used to using a foot switch. M90 microphone, and I think most of them, it, working with the FTDX10 or the 710 or the 101, there isn't a, a dedicated, usually there's an, if you look at the icons and the Kenwoods, there's a dedicated RCA socket on the back, which is just push to talk. So you can link a foot switch directly to it and press the foot switch, the radio goes into PTT. Uh, there isn't on a Yesu, and it gets quite complicated if you're trying to figure out how to make a breakout box and things. This is a rig blaster advantage. I got this when I got my first radio, which was the FT450D, uh, and I wanted to start looking at data modes. The data modes uh, require you to have an internal sound card in the radio or have something like a rig blaster, which is, it fits in between the microphone and the radio and allows you to connect your computer sound card to it. There are videos about this sort of stuff, rig blaster, blaster, rig blaster, rig master, those sort of things. They're basically just like breakout boxes that allow you to attach an external sound card so you can use data modes. This is off. It's completely passive. It doesn't, there's nothing plugged, uh, it's not plugged in. Um, the dials don't do anything. The only reason it's there is because the mic goes into that and then out of the back of that into the radio. And this has a PTT port on the back of it. So my tattooist's foot switch that I bought off Amazon for about eight pounds with an RCA connector on the end of it goes into the back of that and I can control the push to talk with my foot through that. The rest of it completely passive. It's not even connected anymore, but it was just a good solution to a complex problem and it works. Right, what next? Monitors. I'll just set these up as I normally have them running and then we'll talk about them. Okay, monitors left to right. On the left hand screen over here, I have OBS, which is a dedicated streaming software. And that takes all of my video feeds, microphone, and everything else, and puts it into one nice little package that then can send that to YouTube for the live stream. So that's what's running on there. On the center screen here, I have Station Master Pro running. Station Master Pro is brilliant. It's not just logging software, it's so much more. There's an element of social media and uh, sort of community to it. And there, it's directly connected to my QRZ page. So when I log on here, it automatically updates QRZ. It allows me to band hop and have cat control on the actual radio itself. It allows me to look at maps of where people are from the second that I put, put the call sign into it. There's so much. I am going to do a video on Station Master Pro, not a review, but just a look. This is what it can do, and this is how I use it. This is this is what I get out of it. So that's on the center screen there. On the right-hand screen over here, I call this my scratch screen. The scratch screen basically is where I'll have my whatever open, Google or Notepad, if I'm taking notes on things and everything else. And when I'm editing, you know, this will be my main editing screen and I'll have various other bits on the other monitors as well when I haven't got all this other stuff open. So yeah, there's all of that there. Um, with regards to the streaming setup, if you want me to do a video on how I set up my stream, then please let me know in the comments. I've, I've thought about it a few times, but I've never actually done it because I don't know if people are that interested, to be honest with you. But yes, we've got the three monitors, and this is all geared towards when I go live and do a live stream on YouTube. So that's that. Uh, what else have we got? Right. Oh, yeah, of course, we've got the, the, the big TV up there. There is, and people are going to jump on the comments, so you know, I'll explain this now. There is an issue with the video out on the Yesus, the FTDX10, the FTDX101, the 710. They all have these DVID output ports on the back of the actual radios. And if you use a DVID to HDMI converter to plug it into a TV like that one up there or into a HDMI compatible monitor that doesn't have a DVID port, you do risk ruining uh, the video out circuitry on the radio and it will just blow and that's it. You've got to send it away for repair. There are two videos in the description. The first video is a deep dive, in-depth look at the HDMI problem with these radios. 
and why it's not safe to use DVI-D to HDMI cables to connect them to monitors. That's video one. That's quite a long video, it's quite a technical video, but it gives you an explanation as to why don't just plug one of these straight into a monitor. Video two is how I connect the radio to the computer using a video capture card. And that video capture card basically goes from the radio into the computer, eliminates all the HDMI problems, and then from the computer, I can send that video to that big TV up there or to OBS software on there. And that's how I capture all of that. I've got a webcam up here. Um, Station Master Pro software has a facility to actually incorporate your webcam into uh, into the actual logging software and then just basically you can take that whole screen and send it over to your streaming software. It's all very clever. So yeah, that's all of that. Um, you'll notice I've got a big piece of glass on the uh, table here. It's actually a corner shelf glass unit that I had spare. Um, here's the reason why. So quite often I use my HTs or I'll be reviewing HTs or programming HTs and this is just a five pound phone holder from uh, from like Asda or somewhere, I can't even remember where I got it from. Um, and basically what I do is I just stick that on there, on the piece of glass, and then I put my radio on there. And I've got that in front of me, it's at eye level, I can put you know, a, a speaker mic on there, and I can use my hands on here and everything else. So that's the only reason there's a piece of glass on there. Uh, what else have we got? Um, I haven't done it yet, but I did this on my old setup. Uh, write down your, uh, things like you worked all Britain squares, um, and your locators and things like that. I usually have them on a piece of paper on the desk because I can never remember them. I don't know about you. Right, uh, there's just under the desk to have a look now. So we're going to go to a bit of B-roll and I'll talk over the top of it. So on the floor there, you can see, uh, firstly, we've got the push to talk switch, the foot switch. That's just a tattooist's foot switch, about eight pound on Amazon. Um, you can see that I have my Mains born RFI Eliminator that I did a video on, a very well received video. Uh, that's there, which feeds into that six gang uh, socket set there. And uh, yeah, that saves me about, I would say about two S points of noise um, when I've got that plugged in as to otherwise having it directly into the mains. Uh, everything for the shack is plugged into there. And uh, the computer. And the computer is just a basic Windows 10 computer. Uh, I think I put a, a slightly bigger video card in it uh, just to handle the streaming and things like that. And uh, from the back of that, that's connected into my Zixel, I believe it's called, uh, mesh system. So I have um, direct connection fiber broadband into the property, fiber broadband, and uh, that's into a main router downstairs. And then I have a mesh system set up, so the actual computer itself isn't connected to Wi-Fi at all. It's uh, just a hard Ethernet connection straight into the mesh system that I've got running. And that's about it. I'm pretty sure uh, I don't have anything else to show you. Anyway, that's the shack. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can support the channel. You can either become a channel member and get perks like uh, early access to videos before they're released to the general public. And you can also get things like stickers and badges so that if I'm live, you pop up and you're very visible there on the live streams as well. If you don't want to do that, you could always just buy me a coffee and there's a link in the description for that as well. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Yep. Anyway, the RFA Eliminator, uh, there's a link to the uh, to that video in the description. Uh, one of the first sort of like big videos that I did that seemed to get a lot of views. Brilliant. That's it. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next video. See you later.